This is a E Machines D620 series. Probably a rebadged Chinese piece of junk, but not surprisingly, it has a problem. Fans going, fans stopped, no display. Optical drive works, that's about it. No response, no beeps, no error codes, no flashing lights, nothing. So, I'll show you what I did, because I have actually got this going, or I know how to get it going, so I'll show you what I did. A couple of things when working on computers, anti-static mat, anti-static wristband, connected to an earthing point. You're going to need a screwdriver, uh, because we're going to be changing the CPU, you need isopropyl alcohol to clean the uh, heatsink, some toilet paper that is but any any sort of thing like that'll do that's pretty much it oh and your spare CPU fresh from eBay uh, loosen the five screws on the top the little thing there get your finger underneath it and gently prise up Obviously before you do any of this, make sure the battery is removed and the AC power cable is removed. Now, I already know what's wrong with this, but the steps I went through to sort this were to remove both of these RAM modules, change them for other ones, and try one at a time in each socket. Remove this, remove the hard drive, this just slides out. Hard drive, that the wireless module you undo that screw there's only a screw on one side on this one for some reason that's how it was I think the other one might be held down by a screw in the lid actually I oh, know maybe not it's just cheap um, but what we need to do is get to the processor so first we need to remove the fan there's two screws one there one there Magnetic screwdrivers always help. Right. Slide the fan back, up, forwards, and careful of the cable. You need to get your fingernails in underneath the little connector and just pull it out, that's it, that's the fan, next is the heat sink, it's held in by four screws, these are captive and they're sprung as well, I don't think it matters but I tend to undo them in a diagonal pattern, very hard to do this one handed. If I wasn't so lazy I would have got the other camera out on the tripod. This will usually be stuck, so you might need to use a, bit, a little bit of pressure, but not too much force to lift it up. So lift it up, slide it back towards you, and then it's out. That's the heatsink assembly. And the processor is no different to any desktop. It's an AMD processor, socket AM2 in this, so it just lifts out. And that's our dub processor. The first thing we need to do is clean this gunk off. So I'm going to use some loo roll. 
and some isopropyl. Just put some on here, give it a good rub. I'm going to get that copper surface as clean as possible. Nice and shiny. The other thing I'm going to do, this doesn't actually look too bad, but I have compressed air. Just give it a bit of a just blow it out. And of course, the ones of you who are paying attention will have noticed that you will need some thermal grease, which I forgot to mention earlier. And there's the replacement processor, not packed as well as I'd like it to be, but uh, it will do. Now, this is an AM2 socket, but you can't just chuck any AM2 processor in here. I did for testing, I stuck in a, a 3800, I think it was, uh, Athlon 64, but I only powered it on just for a few seconds to make sure it would uh, boot. The reason being, processors have what's called a TDP, or thermal design power. If you put in a processor that's got a much higher TDP than the one that's in here, you're likely to overheat something, because that heat sink's only designed to cope with a certain amount of power dissipation. This is an Athlon uh, 2650E. It's very low TDP of 15 watts. Something like a 3800, which I used to test this with, was 89 watts. So your laptop's going to get very hot very quickly and possibly burn you and burn itself out. So it'll probably cause some damage if you ran it for any period of time. I read somewhere that the maximum you can really go with this laptop is about 45 watts. But I'm going to like for like because this isn't my laptop. So just a case of the reverse. Put the processor back in. Hopefully none of these pins are bent. These are uh, very fragile. Just got to make sure that you line up. Line up the pin one. See a little gold square in the corner and there's a mark on the board down there indicating where pin one is. And it should, hopefully, drop in. Yep, there it goes. Yeah. Now this is quite clean, but I'm going to clean it with the isopropyl anyway. Just to get off any extra gunk. And now we need to apply some of this. And this is... Uh, what is it? Trilinear Ceramic Thermal Compound. It will do the job. The sun's come out. Now I've applied a bead of that there. And the best thing to do is just wipe it along with a an old card or something. Like so. Spread it out nice and smoothly along the top of the processor. That's nicely covered. One thing to be aware of is the heatsink in the laptop usually covers more than one chip. That chip also needs to have thermal compound on it. This one's got kind of a sticky pad on it, so it should be okay. But I'll probably put some on anyway. And then all you do is the reverse. Slide this one in carefully. Line it up. There we go. And do the screws. Uh, to, again, I do them in a diagonal order, like that. I'll just do that quickly. And then, need to reinstall the fan. Get a little connector. It's a little bit fiddly. But it slide it back. Down, forward, 
and then start putting the screws back in. Again, difficult one-handed. Okay, fans back in. I've still got the hard drive out, but let's turn that off. A bit hot in here, that's why I've got that going. Let's have a look. Apply power. Let's see. Power light. And we have display. It's not going to boot, obviously, because there's no hard drive, but success. I'll put it all back together. And obviously putting it back together is, is the reverse. Slide the hard drive in. Slide it to the right. That meets up quite nicely. Get your bottom panel. Line up all the little debris. Push it down. And then do up all the screws. Simple. Well, it's just a case of reinstall battery. Apply power. Appears to be charging. Nah, the person who owned that told me it failed while they were using it. Mm. Looks like it's Windows 7. Newer than I thought it was, I thought it was going to have Vista on it. And there we go. I don't think you need to see any more. It's not a very fast laptop, it's a cheap one, so there we go. Have fun. If you do try this yourself, remember anti static, behave yourself, unplug it, take the battery out. Um, and if you do break it, don't blame me. Cheers.